fire on the roof is really easy to extinguish, okay? Because you see it right next to your roof tent right away. Oh, okay. God. I want to work today on getting a diesel heater for our roof tent. I bought, of course, the cheap Chinese one with 2KW. And I built me a little test setup here with the gold zero and everything. And I tested this thing, make sure it works. Now these diesel heaters take a lot of electrical power because of the glow plug inside. So our gold zero, I realized when you run it off 12 volt, um, the electronic fuse shuts off, which really sucks. That's why I had to buy actually a 220 to 12 volt power supply. But the downside is that this of course draws in idle already nine watts. And then when I start up the diesel heater, it got like a little remote control here and all I got to do is push the on button and you hear it click and then over here on this display you see that it goes to level three and now it starts up see so I got this like this now the fumes can go outside it actually draws 145 watts in startup mode so that's huge now you hear this thing clicking that's the noise you hear. That's why this needs to be insulated pretty good in the car. See there it's smoking during startup. See, that's of course not very good starting a diesel heater and turning it off right away. It's accurately positioned. <laughs> that's gonna be so cool. That is our rooftop box, you know, which sits in front of the rooftop tent. with our solar panel. We've made a video about it. Okay. Oh boy! This was really difficult to make. <gasps> oh my god! Okay, because see, these Chinese tanks are absolute garbage. So I had to build this tank and it got a hose going down here with a weight and a filter so it picks up the fuel and I also got a vent hole. Yeah. And this is a high quality German canister. So I built me this bending tool and I never really finished it, but it's, it's good enough for some little aluminum bending here. Stiffen it up a bit more, but it's not bad. You need to change your calendar sheet. Like she's wearing the proper chainsaw outfit, isn't she? Yeah. But what, you messed up something? Yeah, I, I bent this one the wrong way. Okay, so now I gotta bend it again. So something is happening here again. You can see that here, tank mount. <laughs> Second attempt. So he just told me that he built that bending machine for my chuck box, which I don't even have yet. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like this is much better. Like this. Yeah. You I just it. said out loud, you can't get me a four millimeter tap. I didn't say get me a four millimeter tap. I said you can't get me. That's just, you know, a statement. Yes, but that is one of those things you are, you better not say when working with your wife. Yeah, but it's a fact. I don't care. You can do certain things either. This is a four millimeter tap, okay? problem is where to find it. Oh. You never want to break a tap on camera. Okay, you may not see the end of this video because it may come to a divorce before that. Because I had to discuss now if this is thread is good enough or if it's not good enough. I was just wondering if that really is four millimeter material. Uh, why would you wonder if this is four millimeter material? Because... Okay, we'll see if this fits. See. Oh, we didn't want to film that, did we? This is only a test fit. Yep. I, I just saw that camera above. It, I hope it's running because there was a lot of swearing just today. Saw this one now? <laughs> yeah. You didn't see the one in the bedroom? <laughs> And it's not 
cheap Chinese, it's the German one. Good. We are all ready to put all that stuff from our cheap Chinese diesel heater into our box that Christian actually built two years ago. I would never ever put one of these into the living space in the car. I see people doing that. No chance I would do that, but mounting it inside a box and having a fire on the roof of the car, I think is quite acceptable. <laughs> um, this thing was only 140 euros. Yes. And then the accessories, what you need, most of them come with it, but they are completely crap, cheap Chinese stuff. The tank leaks, the fittings are bad, um, and you have to purchase additional components, which gets you to around 250 euros for what you see here on the bench. And this is everything we need. For example, we got here a piece of hose, which costs 20 euros. And that's the external hose, heat resistant and a little more durable compared to cheap Chinese aluminum hose, which we're gonna use on the inside. This one is expandable and it's um, pretty much gonna kink and dent if you use that on the outside. Or for example, the tank. The tank, what comes with the unit, is completely useless. Long term, we're going to connect the diesel heater, if it's working, to our tank inside the vehicle. But I miss for this a quick disconnect hydraulic miniature coupling. I haven't found a good one. There is stuff like this out of the RC car world. Maybe somebody can drop me a link where I can get a quick disconnect hydraulic coupling. I got yelled at because I didn't talk too much <laughs> okay, well. during his lecturing. Now I'm supposed to explain everything. Okay, oh. now he puts on the mounting bracket on the diesel heater, which supports the heater unit in our box here. So three bolts. I use rivet nuts for mounting this. I'm a big friend of these. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna install this already now. Mm -hmm. Oh, I dropped it. Just want to make sure that so scratches are made by Christian. Okay, fire on the roof is really easy to extinguish, okay? Because you see it right next to your roof tent right away. Oh, okay. God. We're I'm never gonna, ever going to use that alone. We're also going to put on the fuel hose because once it's in there, that is more difficult to do. Oh, my God. So it's enough to put it all over the buffer. Yeah. Oh my god. So, okay, I'm not gonna complain. I'm not gonna give you the word to the Sunday. And I gotta wear gloves when I handle this stuff. Yeah. So this goes now in here. There. There. All these brackets we had to make. Um, that was about the most work. Installing this is going to be really easy now. Yeah. Okay, we'll put the muffler in here. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. See it here? And the muffler is going out to this corner. Right here. Yeah. There. Tighten this hose clamp here. And we put a tie wrap around here. Mm -hmm. So this looks good. And the plastic one gotta go. You right. I bent a little heat shield to go over the muffler right here. It's like a movie I'm watching through the yeah. camera while I'm filming. It's going too smooth. <laughs> the heat shield for here. Yeah. Okay. It's supposed to go on there like this. It's all nice. It's all custom made. Making the sheet metal pieces, I spend about six hours. And making the cutouts in the box. See how that looks? No, Beautiful. I'm at my... <laughs> You're not paying attention? <laughs> I was just showing my solar panel. Yeah, it looks okay. really nice. Uh, I can see it. Yeah. See it? Yeah, I see it. There, we have to put a hose clamp around this. Yeah, you got one? There. Yeah. On the other end, we're gonna mount a silencer. That actually makes a big difference. I didn't think of that. 
and I printed a little mount for it right here. The muffler can go anywhere here inside the box, for example right here. I designed this bracket so it has the nuts here captive. Yeah. See how smart that is? You don't need your wife to help you. I don't need my wife to search for the wrench. <laughs> I can yeah. see you working on both sides. Content with that. See? Yep. And I'm using nylon nuts. So it doesn't rattle apart. And we can mount the air connection here. So I got a support bracket here, made So six hours later. Yeah, that would have been a job for our 8mm ratchet wrench. That's easy. So now this one is really good. And we also got one additional heat shield here. And that heat shield is going around our exhaust hose here. There and there. Good. Now when you look down here, everything is nicely protected. So this is the fuel pump and the pump needs to be mounted so it's pumping upwards. And the secondary fuel line behind the pump is not supposed to drop in elevation, but that's not quite possible in every installation, so you have to make the best you can out of it. And of course, we're gonna keep those in our toolbox. Yes. Those are most important. So I'm using also here nylon nuts. You can see both parts. <laughs> yeah. And the mounting bracket is made out of rubber, so it's supposed to dampen the noise a little bit yeah. of this pump. Here, we route oh, this fuel line. That's decent. Nicely here. Take the cap here off. Yeah, don't throw it away. And have two fire extinguishers and we can distinguish it. In yeah, the I'm, of the I'm night. most certain gonna buy another one for the tent now. <laughs> Because need to fire this extinguisher. Okay. The next step is to mount the fuel tank. And so it's such a pretty one. Hühnersdorf. I hope they make one. For my spare tire mount. Where my traction boards are mounted. I made like a little mount for the for the tank. And this is only an interim solution. So we don't need any comments that we should have installed a 20 gallon fuel container. Yes. And the tank, I pressure tested it. I'm not sure if I got footage of that. Oh boy. Okay. This is the vent connection yeah. and this is the suction connection. Okay, yeah. so the one pointing upright is the vent. But it, it, will it close when you mount it like that? What? Because of the high lid, you know. So During your test, goes, we mount, you mounted it the other way around. You got that problem sometimes that you don't understand what your wife well, means? Well, it's, it's too high up here, I think you said. You need to, to uh, mount it the other way around. Exactly. That's where we... Okay, why didn't you say that? It in that diesel spill over there, exactly. Okay, so I printed a little bezel. So the tank... Just so it doesn't... It doesn't jump around on us. But it's not supposed to be taken out, it's going to stay in here. We're going to connect the diesel filter right here. Yeah, right there. There we go. And the other end we connect to our tank. To our tank. So I cut this here. And it's going to get us a diesel swap bill again. Yeah. These are stainless steel fittings I found. They're really high quality. There. All of these tanks, when you buy them, have a vent connection. And the vent hole leaks diesel when you go around and the diesel swaps around in the tank. And what I found for that is a check valve. And that will let air in only in one direction. See in this direction? And in this direction? Closed. There we go. Ah. 
So it only lets air out and no air in. It lets only air in and no air out. Oh. So I made this aluminum air outlet flange out of a piece of sheet metal and I welded this into a piece of pipe and I turned it over in my lathe. You can buy something like this out of plastic, but of course it doesn't look so elegant. So this goes in here. Yeah. It says up. Now it looks funny again. <laughs> We have to mount the air inlet, which is this piece here. Oh boy. Yeah, and all we're gonna do here is just glue it in with a hot glue gun. Yeah, which we almost never use. This should work perfectly. Yeah. Because it's gonna. There we go. There. I'll put a little bit on the side here. There. A little bit over here. There. Good. This Don't hose. cut it too short. No, this hose you can't cut too short. It stretches actually to one meter. Cut it right here. You cut it with a carpet knife. Yeah, just like that. Oh boy! So it cannot connect to yeah. the ninety degree angle. And here I gotta clean up my tools. <laughs> Look how pretty this looks. Yep. We have to install these two plugs and then we're pretty much done with the installation inside this box. That's the plug we're going to use. This is an industrial harding plug. What are we going to use that for? To connect the remote control so you can have the remote control inside the tent. Oh my god, that doesn't look like anything. Yeah. Electrical. So they go in here. We gotta do the wiring, so this thing gotta go on here, there, and this gets connected to power, this gets connected to the pump, so we're gonna run this to this connector over here, what we mount. Uh, this goes in your mouth, this one goes in your ear, and this one goes in your butt. Shit, hang on a second. This one. Oh. Uh, Hurry up! This one. This one goes in your mouth. Right there. Cut it right here. Oh my god. There we go. Oh, he already did it. And then we have to install now this insert inside the plug. Ah. So I got it now finished and installed completely. The electrical is done here. Fuel is connected. Tank filled up. There's my display unit, what I can take with me into the tent. That's a heavy duty connector, all watertight and everything. And here's my power connector, like from a tractor, where the 12 volts come in. And here comes the hot air out. So. We're ready to prime now the pump and I got to turn AC on, provide me 12 volt in a higher amperage and now I can take this cord here and plug it into this outlet and if I wired everything up correctly the fuse shouldn't blow and my display unit should show something. When the unit is off I got to push these two buttons together yeah, and that's what's cycling the pump. And I got the pump disconnected so it doesn't flood the heater. That's gonna take a while. You give it a try, see if it works. Yeah, it's already dark out. Looking all nice, he filled that up with diesel. 
everything is connected. So it has glow plugs. That is not good. It's going to smoke pretty bad now on the first start. Yeah. Because it has too much diesel in the combustion chamber. Well, how do you patch it? Now when I close the lid now, watch yeah. it. This is what you would hear in the tent. Quite now warm. it's really warm. There's no temperature rise here. All cold. So today is the day and we've got big help. Otherwise Christian and I would be doomed and we would never get that rooftop tent on top of my car. Ah, fitting perfect. Christian won't leave without his ladder. The ladder is the best thing. <laughs> Oh, looking good. Huh? So we greased it before. Good. That is the best looking car. <laughs> so we're gonna paint the front black because it's acting like a mirror and when you when there is the sun outside it's blinding. Yeah. Other people in traffic. All prepped for painting. Second coat. Okay, final coat. That's good enough. It's an off-road rig and not a mall crawler. <laughs> yeah. How do you like that? Yeah. Okay. It's looking really good. Yes, I'm going to have to <laughs> sleep in the rooftop tent tonight. <gasps> you see, there's not a cloud in the sky, which is great, you know, but it's going to be a really cold night. So, mattress is still missing, but we're going to see if if everything works correctly, I should be able to connect through this window my controller here, which yeah. can then remain in the tent. Yeah, there are two zippers. And then I should be able to reach out here and get that hose in because it's right there. Yeah? Yeah. Right here. Right? Yeah. And what I do now is I take my Harding industrial plug. Yeah. Okay, so now it's connected. And as soon as I connect this, I got here my display. Yeah. And now I turn it on. So it's got to, it needs to be, it's, yeah, whatever. There. Yeah. We're going to close this up here. Yeah. There. I still have a couple of construction sites, I realize now. The cable, for example, which I ran to power this thing is a little too short and also too thick. So we got to fix that. Yeah. But now it's heating up here. And what you can see on this controller is that the fan is going with three. That could be the outside temperature, but because the box was inside and we just took oh, it out. Okay. okay, now if I hit the push button here, I can go to five. You can even go to six. With four, you should be able to survive the night. Uh, by the oh, way, here you are. The exhaust is over here, so I don't smell that. But yeah. yeah, you don't. It's only during startup. So this is now all running. This bracket here actually got hot. Really? Yes, and that's why I took the cables off this bracket and also this. The diesel line is Yeah, the diesel line is still touching it lightly. There we go. But no, no coffee on our channel. <laughs> That's true. It's tea. 
<laughs> okay, tea is allowed. You can take your tea with you, but no coffee making on our channel, no. okay? <laughs> it's also, what do you think about the noise for reading? Yeah, here, and you, you can hear it because you hear the pump ticking. Yeah, we need a 90 degree angle because this is blowing up a little. Yeah, I want to get to mattress now and go to bed. You know, it's my too early. Is it's eight o'clock. It's, <laughs> ah, it's so nice. So, but you still yeah. have to learn a few things. Oh, no. How do you turn it off? I hit that button. And you didn't even you, take off the foil. You can take off the foil. <laughs> So. You, you have to hold this button pushed, but then it goes through a power off cycle. It says the letters OFF on here. <laughs> <laughs> so now I wanted to lecture about these units. There's one point where they become dangerous and that is if they run out of electrical power. So for some reason, if your goal zero turns off when they are running, then they will develop a lot of excess heat in wherever they are mounted, like inside your cabin or in our case inside that box, or disconnecting them prematurely from the electrical power. You can see that the little fan symbol here is still running. Yeah. yeah. And that's indicating that it's still cooling down until this display completely goes blank. It's still in that cool down cycle. So in the morning, you basically got to wait before you disconnect that controller um, until this is completely off. Another problem is if you run out of fuel and they suck in air, then you have to go through a bleed cycle and that bleed cycle will bring excess fuel oil into the combustion chamber before this thing is running and that will make it smoke terribly yeah. and also build up carbon. I'm gonna sleep in my rooftop tent tonight. Oh, it's gonna be cold. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> so, one degree outside. Let's see if I remember what Christian told me. I'm going to press the middle button. Ah. And of course, I'm here all by myself. Christian is not one to sleep in the rooftop tent until, unless he has to. The air is really warm. H2. Because three was quite a lot. My diesel heater on for about an hour. I think it's quite warm. I even got undressed. I'm all naked here. And I'm gonna turn it off now and see how cold it's gonna get. I think I'm gonna be just fine. Press the middle button till off. Great. So it's six o'clock and actually quite cold. It's minus three degrees outside. Oh. oh man, the ground is frozen. <laughs> What's your resume? after this night <laughs> it was actually quite quite okay i let it run yesterday evening for 45 minutes just only about, yeah. i would have let it run for 45 hours yeah. <laughs> but then because then i got tired you know and it was warm enough but i did wake up freezing oh. around 5 30 this morning and it took me a while to wake up and realize that i was freezing and then i turned it on well, it's certainly warm in here now. Yeah. The only problem is, like, um, the air is going up, so it's way warmer up here. Yes. Still, we yeah. have to we have to fix the air distribution. Yeah. Um, the air needs I to think come down here where I am. Yeah. You know that's that we need. To I think I bought this hose too short. So and you just might need to buy a bigger hose. Well, well now it feels fine. Yeah, or I have to make some sort of a mount here. Yeah. I mean, the great thing is that the tent is, it's all dry. So normally there is lots of condensation and it's all, it's dry. all dry. So this is a big difference. You know, if you have the choice between this aircraft humming noise 
or freezing to death, it's pretty clear. Yeah. So what else are you doing? I'm working on this little panel you suggested, which we're going to mount inside the rooftop tent. Um, but this will be in another video. But just to give you a little preview, I welded this aluminum box. You did? Yeah, aluminum welding is really not easy, but <laughs> I ground over it at the end. But it looks all nice and... Yeah, it, it fits. So it's going to get a rear cover. And this is going to sit in the rooftop tent, you know, clip on one of the posts and then inside this panel I'm gonna put the display in here, yeah? The display is gonna go in and then I have a nice voltmeter and a switch which goes on the side. All of those components cost altogether 19 euros. So I got this here and then on top I'm gonna mount a outlet port for, um, for example, a laptop. And then I got you here the USB charge Most ports. Important. They go in here. And then I even got a little dimmer which goes in here. And a connection is gonna go in here. And then this dimmer is gonna run you a LED strip. It's gonna run along that aluminum support structure yeah. in the tent. So you can turn that on and off and dim it. Yeah. And then the whole thing gets connected with a cable to the box. And that box I'll I'll hook up every time to so the that out box you take out. It's gonna yeah, have to the outside a, port of my rooftop box. Yes, so that box is gonna have a two meter cable and yeah. a clip in point and when you clip it in the cable the cable from the LEDs is gonna dangle there, you plug it in. We're gonna show this in another video, not in this one, otherwise I'm rushed too much. We yeah. gotta we gotta get that video on. Otherwise we miss our window for Sunday. <laughs> and then YouTube's gonna penalize us with you know not promoting the video like they do. Wait until I show you what I want done to my car. So I can use the diesel heater in all circumstances. Here is the outlet with a hose that normally goes into the rooftop tent, that's the plan, but sometimes I actually sleep inside the car when I'm all alone and then I have to lower the rear window, put in the hose and I want him to print or build like a cover so that it's closed when the tube goes into here or here. So that's the last thing he has to do. <laughs> no, you don't you dare. Put my new no, no. Mall crawler sticker over <laughs> the LR Time sticker? No. You're not so, going to do that. Okay, see here's the mall crawler logo now on it. We're going to put this on the mall crawler now. Yeah, okay. and it's all dirty. So I think this is where it goes, okay? The mall crawler yeah. LR Time sticker. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. This sticker suits this car much better. Okay, that's it for this week's video. So hopefully you found something you like and we didn't waste your time completely. As always, if you like this video, please think about subscribing and in any case, please do not unsubscribe. And also think about hitting that notification bell so you know exactly when we post a new video and you can watch it right away. Because YouTube is only suggesting our videos on other home screens if they get watched in a reasonable amount of time after posting. If that's not the case, they will drop the video and show you hamster videos on your home screen and videos how to make coffee. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next Sunday. Ella, time restored. Very good.
see even the belt tensioner works now again. Yeah. Oh my god, he built a chair. <laughs> oh my god. How cool is that? He even has an S screw. <laughs> a Homer Simpson S screw? Yeah. Oh man. Robin, yeah. that is so that incredibly is cool. And it's completely made out of. <laughs> that is so. Oh my god. 